The deception of Satanism is in its effort to appear more appealing than Christianity. And it does this by using buzzwords like human motivation, science, or explorer. It entices the senses of a generation that is still in pursuit of their identity. It is a road that leads to destruction. And the Church of Satan believes individuals should be self-centered and focus on their own happiness own indulgence and anything that they want. In other words, Satanists believe that you are your own God. And we see the same pattern in the Garden of Eden where Satan tempts Eve to eat the forbidden fruit. He says to her, you will not die for God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God. And the truth is that there is only one God, the God of the Bible. We should only worship God and not ourselves. But Satanism poses the idea of individualism when, in fact, it is actually saying, don't worship God. It sounds like individualism, but it's don't worship God. Satanism believes in a self-centeredness, which leads to isolation, whereas Christianity believes in and also encourages fellowship and community. Because when the enemy can isolate you, he can destroy you. I don't know about you, but to me, there's nothing compassionate about ripping out pages out of the Holy Bible. If the intention is not to offend anyone and to be at peace with all men, not to offend other religions, why disrespect the Holy Book of another practice of faith? Why disrespect Christians? Why disrespect the Christian belief system? So do not be deceived by their flattery and use of words. There is a real agenda by the kingdom of darkness unleashed into this world. And all it takes is one window of accepting their thoughts for your entire mind and spirit to be contaminated. It just takes one, one window, just one, ah, that doesn't sound too bad. Ah, that makes a bit of sense. Just one, you know what? I think they might be right. It just takes one crack in the wall to bring the whole house down. Did the serpent not go up to Eve in the Bible, flattering her with deceptive words and twisting the truth of God's word? That happened in the Bible. It sounded good at that moment. It sounded right in that moment. And look what it eventually did. It caused the fall of the entire mankind. And we see in the garden that Satan wasn't looking for Eve to worship him. That's that's really what this deception is all about. Satan wasn't really looking for Eve to worship him. Satan was looking for Eve to not worship God. One thing we have to understand is that Satan's job is accomplished when he can get people to join him in going against God. He doesn't care if you choose to be a Satanist or not. So long as you lose the reverence for God, he's okay. His job is to make sure that people lose the reverence for God. People don't worship God. People join him in his pride. And in in Psalm 5 verse 9, it says that there's nothing reliable in what they say, meaning the, the enemy. There's nothing reliable in what they say because their inward part is destruction itself. Their throat is an open grave. They flatter with their tongue. This is speaking of the enemies of David. David was asking God to lead him in the way of righteousness because of his enemies. And I really do believe that this should also be our prayer. That God leads us in the way of righteousness so that we are not consumed by all the darkness around us. We are not confused by all the darkness that's around us. Because what looks good in the sight of man is not always good in the sight of God. The enemy will always use what looks good on the outside as a way to lure us into darkness. But hold on to God. Hold on to God's word. Hold on to God's ways because that is the only thing that will keep you. It's the only thing that will keep us. And although the Bible warns us of people turning away from God in the last days, I have to be very honest, I never thought that I'd see such blatant satanic agenda and celebration in my day. I knew the last days were going to be terrible, but I didn't think it would happen in my day, this blatant disrespect. And it is important that we stand firm to the truth and hold on closer to God now much more than ever before. It is very, very important because they're not hiding it anymore. They're not hiding. They're right in our faces. And so we also don't have to hide anymore. 
if you have been confused about your faith, if you have been unsure of where you stand, if you have been unsure of being bold, this is the time to pray for the spirit of boldness to come upon your life. This is the time to walk in who God has called you to be. This is the time to be unashamed, to be unafraid. This is the time because the enemy is really showing out. They're being very brave. Things are right in our faces. And so we have to get bolder. I leave you all in the good grace of God. Until next time.